After 17 days of mystery, we learn today that all that stands between a fragile hope and a brutal reality is one sentence. The government of Malaysia today told the families of 239 people their loved ones will not be coming home. That new evidence concludes the plane plunged into the ocean. So today, what have officials learned that makes them so certain? And what about the debris floating in the water? Is that from Flight 370? We begin with ABC's David Wright on the shattering news for the families. It is therefore with deep sadness. The Malaysian Prime Minister delivered the news we've all been dreading. Flight MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. Today in Beijing and Kuala Lumpur, heartbreak. As the Malaysian government announced that the final flight path was narrowed down through data from the satellite firm Imarsat, tracking pings from the plane. And the pings match our plot for the southern route. They do not match the northern route, and therefore the northern route is ruled out. The exact spot it went down, still unknown. Earlier today, new clues. An Australian P3 spotted debris, a gray or green circular object, and an orange rectangular object. We don't yet know if they were from the plane. Searchers marked the area with smoke flares. For a week now, search and rescue teams have been guided by grainy satellite images, combing this remote stretch of sea bigger than California. We've been with them, flying low over choppy seas and heavy fog. Once they find the debris field, the heavy wreckage is liable to be miles away and miles down. Finding it will require submersible drones like these. The computer models that we have done shows that the debris has moved almost 500 kilometers away from where it would have originated from. Because it's been so long. It's been so long and the currents are quite strong. Tonight, an Australian warship is headed in to collect and confirm the possible debris. But if you thought the first part of this search was long and difficult, get ready because the second part, they'll be flying blind on the ocean floor, deeper than where the Titanic sank. Diane? All right, David, thank you. And ABC's Bob Woodruff has been on the ground since the beginning for us in Kuala Lumpur. And he's there with the families as they struggle with word tonight that they should give up hope. For the families of the 239 passengers and crew, the news was devastating. At this hotel in Beijing, where many families have been living, raw grief. Others brought out by stretcher. And there was also anger. Malaysian Airlines is lying, this man shouts. The families I have met kept to themselves today. Patrick Gomez is the chief steward on that plane, and three days ago, his wife Jackie, his four children, told me they have been burning this candle since the plane disappeared so that he could find his way home, at least in spirit. If it's in the ocean, it's final, you know? He comes back in a different way, which is not what we want. I did talk to Jackie about an hour after that announcement. She was, as you can imagine, absolutely in tears, but she was surrounded by her family, her priest, and also a representative from the airline. And in that bowl, that candle was still lit. Diane. Thank you so much, Bob. And now I want to turn to retired Colonel Stephen Ganyard, our aviation consultant, and ABC's David Curley, who's been on the story from the beginning. And I'll start with you, David. How convinced are American investigators that these families should now give up hope. They, they are convinced that this aircraft is in the southern Indian Ocean. And what we learned today from the satellite company is they took some additional data points, put them all together, the fuel, the glide pattern from Boeing. They had others check their data. Are we right? Is this where the plane is? Yes, this is where this aircraft but is. But the fact that they did it today just says to me they know even more. There's uh, something they're not telling us. We, obviously, that national security assets, not only of the U.S.'s, but others have been used in this. And I'm sure they're not not telling us everything about the, where they know, how they know where this aircraft is. Okay, I want to turn to you, Steve, because what about the debris field? We're seeing more and more sightings of debris. What does it say to you? It, well, Diane, we have to remember that find, looking at debris fields in the ocean is very difficult. When, it, when an airplane hits on land, it tends to create a pattern that investigators can look at. So although they're looking at small pieces, they also have the whole of the puzzle as well. 
but when it hits water, the, the wind and the currents and the tide disperse all that debris, so it's very difficult. We're looking at individual clues, and it makes it very difficult to deduce anything useful to why this airplane came down, which leads back why we need to get to the black boxes. The black boxes, and I was going to go back to David on that because you've got one here right now, and show us exactly where the ping is. This, this is the pinger right here that has the battery and sends up the signal, and it's a, it's a kind of a metronome sound. Let's listen to it. And this is what these submersible crafts will be listening for. But there's a chance this isn't working. And the only way then we find the black box is by using sonar to look for debris on the ocean floor and then t send a sub down to pick it up. That's what happened in Air France. Still, the only hope for finding out what really happened is that sound at the bottom of the ocean right now. Getting to this box.